thank you for that introduction uh, and thank you everyone for joining us today what i will try to do in the next uh, 15 minutes or so is uh, give you an overview of immunogenicity inspections that my office the office of study integrity and surveillance under cedar fda is uh, conducting uh, often in collaboration with the office of uh, regulatory affairs ora but before i dive into my talk uh, i would like to refer you to a presentation uh, delivered last year in one of the SBA, uh, SBIA events by my division director, uh, Dr. Julia Cho, entitled uh, Bioanalytical Inspections, Overview and Case Studies. I will give you more information on where to find this presentation uh, in one of my slides later. Uh, that presentation addressed in detail how FDA conducts analytical inspections of bioavailability and bioequivalence studies and uh, how FDA evaluates inspectional findings. The vast majority of inspection components uh, discussed in her presentation apply to immunogenicity testing as well. Uh, therefore, I will not repeat that today. My talk today uh, will rather focus on aspects unique to uh, immunogenicity testing, uh, which were beyond the scope of that uh, presentation. The outline of my talk uh, will be as follows. First, I will briefly describe the immunogenicity testing uh, strategy currently used by the uh, industry. Then I will discuss some uh, considerations about uh, validation of uh, immunogenicity as a critical parameters. I will then uh, list uh, common findings found during OSIS's uh, inspection of uh, immunogenicity assays and discuss uh, some of the findings in more detail. And finally, uh, wrap up with uh, some conclusions. Why are we concerned about immunogenicity of drug products? Drug products, especially large molecule drug products, such as proteins, are known to induce immune response through development of anti-drug antibodies. These immune responses have the uh, potential to affect uh, product pharmacokinetics, uh, pharmacodynamics, uh, safety, and efficacy. Therefore, understanding these immune response uh, is a key aspect of therapeutic drug development. This slide uh, summarizes the immunogenicity testing strategy. FDA recommends a multi-tiered uh, testing approach. First, a sensitive screening assay is used to assess uh, clinical samples. No further testing may be needed for uh, samples that test negative in the screening assay. However, uh, samples testing positive uh, will be subjected to a confirmatory assay uh, to demonstrate that the uh, ADAs are specific for the therapeutic protein product. Samples identified as positive in the confirmatory assay uh, should be further characterized uh, using other assays uh, such as titration and neutralization. In some cases, uh, assays to detect cross-reactivity to other proteins uh, such as uh, endogenous uh, proteins may be needed. Further, in some cases, uh, tests to assess the isotype of the antibodies or uh, their epitope specific specificity uh, may also be uh, recommended. And finally, uh, samples identified as positive in the neutralization assay uh, may be further characterized for uh, titer. Methodologies commonly used in ADA assays include uh, radioimmunoassay, uh, ELISA, ECL, and SPR. For NAB assays, uh, cell-based and competitive ligand binding assays are used. Uh, please note that uh, this is not an exhaustive list of available assay methodologies, but there are always emerging technologies being developed. Here is a, a breakdown of ADA assays used in OSIS inspected BLS in the last five years. The analytical portions of about uh, 40 BLS were inspected. And note that the vast majority of BLS used uh, ECL for ADA assay, followed by ELISA and radioimmunoassay. And uh, some of the BLS used more than one methodology. In addition, uh, in four BLS, SPR was used for isotyping. Uh, similarly, uh, for NAB assays, uh, 24 of the BLS used uh, cell-based assays and 16 used uh, competitive ligand binding assays. 
During inspections of immunogenicity assays, uh, we review and evaluate adequacy of uh, method validation and uh, steady sample analysis, availability of uh, complete and contemporaneous uh, documentation of study activities uh, that enables reconstruction of the uh, study conduct, facility and operations, equipment maintenance and calibration records, employee training records, and uh, data security. As I mentioned at the beginning of this talk, uh, for more details on these topics, I strongly encourage you to uh, watch this presentation. Here I focus on uh, which method validation parameters uh, we reviewed during inspections. Uh, first, assay cut point. Uh, it is the uh, level of assay response that defines whether a sample is uh, positive or negative for uh, immune response. During inspection, we check whether assay cut points were properly determined for all tiers. There are uh, some specific recommendations uh, regarding how assay cut point uh, should be determined in the uh, 2019 FDA guidance on immunogenicity. Recommendations include assay design, number of treatment knife samples to be used, statistical approaches, outlier removal, and approaches to account for uh, pre-existing antibodies. We also confirm uh, whether the sensitivity of the assay was determined. Uh, since assay sensitivity can be affected by onboard drug, we also confirm whether the firm determined assay sensitivity uh, in the presence of the expected concentration of onboard drug, uh, which is also known as assay uh, drug tolerance. Another uh, critical parameter we also look at is assay specificity. Uh, which refers to the ability of a method to exclusively detect the uh, target ADA. It's important to ensure that the assay uh, specifically detects anti-drug antibodies to the drug, uh, but not other molecules that may be present in the sample, uh, such as uh, the drug itself, uh, soluble drug target, non-specific uh, endogenous antibodies or antibody reagents used in the assay. Immunogenicity assay should also be tested for uh, selectivity uh, to confirm its ability to identify uh, ADA uh, specific to the therapeutic uh, drug product in the uh, presence uh, of other sample components. Unlike small molecules, uh, which can be extracted from biological matrices prior to analysis, ADA samples are analyzed in matrix. To minimize matrix interference, uh, such samples are often diluted before analysis. Therefore, the uh, minimum required dilution, MRD, should be defined during method development or uh, validation. Demonstrating assay precision uh, is critical to the assessment of ADA uh, because uh, assay variability is the uh, basis for determining the cut points and ensuring that the uh, low positive samples are uh, detected as positive. Reproducibility is another important consideration, especially if an assay will be run by two or more laboratories. Comparable assay performance, including sensitivity, drug tolerance, and precision, should be established between laboratories. Assay robustness, which is the capacity of the assay to remain unaffected by small changes in method and instrument performance, should also be assessed. Such so changes may include uh, temperature, uh, incubation times, or uh, buffer characteristics, uh, including pH and uh, salt concentration. Because uh, it's generally not uh, feasible to establish the uh, stability of subject samples, FDA uh, recommends uh, storing subject samples in a manner that preserves uh, antibody reactivity at the uh, time of testing. FDA also uh, recommends minimizing free stall cycles by allocating uh, subject samples. However, uh, studies evaluating uh, benchtop and uh, free stall stability of critical reagents, such as the uh, positive control antibodies, uh, are important for ensuring consistency of assay uh, performance. During inspections, uh, OSIS identified the uh, following common findings. Uh, one of the uh, common findings was that the uh, low positive control uh, concentration is irrelevant to monitor the uh, precision of the assay for samples with assay signals close to the cut point. 
Uh, this happens when the LPC signals are significantly higher than that of the assay cut point, and uh, when most steady sample signals are uh, close to the uh, plate specific cut point. Uh, here is an example that describes a, a situation that I just mentioned. Uh, this is a, a plot of data uh, from a screening assay. Uh, the uh, green dots refer to assay signal from subject samples. The red lines show uh, the uh, mean plate specific cut point and the blue line uh, shows the uh, mean LPC signal. Uh, samples uh, with signals above the plate specific cut point are considered potentially positive and will be further analyzed using a, a confirmatory assay. And note that the uh, mean LPC signal is approximately uh, 2.5 fold higher than that of the uh, mean plate specific cut point. In addition, 92% uh, of the samples screened positive have uh, signals below the uh, mean LPC uh, signal. In situations like this, uh, FDA will be concerned that the assay performance around the cut point is not adequately monitored uh, and there is little confidence in the ability of the assay uh, to distinguish uh, potentially ADA positive samples from ADA negative samples in the uh, screening assay. Um, high LPC uh, may not necessarily be concerning if uh, most of the positive uh, sample signals are around or higher than the LPC signals. FDA uh, recommends uh, selecting LPC concentration resulting in assay failure, assay failure at a rate of uh, 1%. Uh, here is a, a quote uh, from the uh, guidance document. The second finding we identified was that uh, not all validation parameters were assessed during assay validation. Especially uh, for a confirmatory assay, uh, parameters such as precision, specificity, and selectivity uh, were not assessed. And FDA uh, recommends that uh, confirmatory assays should be fully validated in a manner uh, similar to the uh, screening and neutralization assays. Other parameters uh, such as drug tolerance and selectivity in uh, hemolyzed plasma uh, were not assessed in all tiers. Third, uh, freestow and benchtop stability assessments of the uh, positive control were either not done or were inadequate. Uh, for example, uh, some of the inadequacies include uh, the number of uh, freestow uh, cycles is exceeded the established uh, freestow cycles in uh, method validation. Uh, no fresh comparator was used uh, during stability assessment or uh, stability was assessed at the high uh, positive control concentration only. Another finding uh, we often encounter uh, was that uh, assay cut point determination is inadequate. Examples of this include uh, use of arbitrary cut point, uh, not using scientifically sound outlier removal methodology, uh, example removal by visual inspection, and uh, not confirming cut point in target population. On this last point, uh, FDA recommends uh, confirming whether the cut point determined uh, during assay validation is uh, suitable for the uh, population being studied. Uh, next, uh, lack of uh, contemporaneous documentation, such as sample movement, uh, sample processing procedures, uh, rationale for repeating assays, and experimental errors were observed. We also found uh, data exclusion without justification, such as uh, duplicate values or uh, precision data uh, in method validation. And uh, finally, uh, use of expired reagents was also noted. In conclusion, uh, I would like to mention that immunogenicity assessment uh, should be uh, designed to detect ADA that could mediate unwanted clinical consequences. And uh, OSIS conducts uh, inspections to ensure immunogenicity data submitted to FDA are accurate and reliable. Here is a uh, challenge question for you. Uh, please take a moment and uh, consider which answer you think is correct. And the answer is
second question and the answer is false that concludes my presentation uh, i will be back in a moment to address any questions you may have uh, now i'm going to turn it over to uh, the next speaker uh, thank you for your attention